This was the number one credit card of 2022. A year later, it ran it back as the top card of 2023. And in today's video, we're gonna see if it can pull off a three-peat to become the number one credit card of 2024. If you're new here, hi, I'm John of John's Finance Tips. I've spent the last decade in the points and miles game, opening credit cards left and right, earning millions of points and miles, and burning through millions more of those points and miles. And in today's video, we wanna find out whether or not the Capital One Venture X is the number one credit card of 2024. The video is gonna break down into the following categories. First, we'll talk about the sign-up bonus. Then we'll discuss the earnings. Then we're gonna break down the benefits. We're really gonna deep dive to see whether or not this card can claim the top title. We'll talk about the annual fee. And finally, my verdict and recommendations. As with all credit cards though, the most important thing if you're new to this game is you must pay your card on time and in full. If you can do those things, then you can play the game of leveraging credit cards to travel for free or greatly reduce your monthly expenses. That sounds like a plan. Pop a squat, tap the thumb icon. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Sign up bonus. Currently, this card has a sign up bonus of earning 75,000 miles after you spend $4,000 within the first three months. And a quick side note, when Capital One says miles, it's pretty interchangeable with points. I don't really know why it is they call them miles, but you can think of them as one and the same. On the low end, this 75,000 miles slash points could be worth as little as $400. On the high end though, this could be flipped for thousands of dollars in value, and I'm show you exactly how to do that in the benefits section. In taking a look at this sign of bonus, compared to some of the other competitive offers from Chase or American Express, the range you would expect is 60 up to 100,000 points. So coming in at 75,000, it's not bad. It's squarely in the middle. And to have had access to this sign-up bonus for now three years is pretty incredible. And so I'm gonna put this at a solid four out of five JFTs. Next segment is earnings. This card will earn 10X if you book hotel or car rental through the Capital One Travel Portal. You will earn 5X for booking airfare through the Capital One Travel Portal, and you will earn 2X for all other purchases, no limit. And what I want to focus on is this 2X earning for everything. Typically, that's something we see for cashback cards, but the issue with cashback cards is the 2X or 2% cashback you earn can only be cashback. Whereas the 2X earnings here can be flipped for significantly more value, and I'll show you exactly on the benefits section. But however, if I think about the overall earnings category, it would have been nice to see an elevated earn for something like dining or groceries or travel, given that this card does sit more so in that travel category. And so for that, I would say on the earnings, this comes in at just an okay 3.5 out of five JFTs. Now on to the tomatoes and potatoes of the video, the real beans and greens of it, the benefits section. So the benefits section is gonna largely break down to two parts. The first part, we'll talk about the travel benefits and the other part, we'll talk about the other benefit. So the travel benefit. The first travel benefit I wanna call out for you is the fact that this credit card has transfer partners. What that means is you can take the miles slash points that you earn here, specifically that sign-up bonus, and move it out to an airline or a hotel partner. In the open secret in the points and miles game, how you see people like me, how you see people on the internet do the razzle dazzle, business class, first class, overwater villa type of bookings is that we use these transfer partners. Very rarely are people paying $5,000, $10,000 cash for a business class flight or $2,500 a night for an overwater villa. They are leveraging the points and miles that they get from their credit card, but more specifically, the points and miles that they get and then transfer out. So here on screen are all the transfer partners that you have with the Capital One Venture X. You've got the everyday players like Air Canada, like British Airways. You also have Flying Blue as well as Virgin Red. Now I didn't call up every single one of them, but these are probably some of the ones that I think deliver the most value. Though of course you can mix and match depending on how your travel style is. We are gonna go over three examples though of how I would go ahead and transfer out these points. So the first one, Let's say you wanna take a quick hop down to Miami, but you live up in New York. And let's say you wanted to do that, instead of an economy, you wanna sit in business class. Now, if you went ahead and found a flight from JFK down to Miami with American Airlines, you pay close to $700. However, if you use one of the transfer partners on this list, specifically British Airways, you can get away with it paying just $5.60 in 20,500 British Avios. The reason this works is because you can transfer your points from Capital One over to British Airways and British Airways can book for partner award availability on any of the One World carriers, which American Airlines happens to be a part of. But let's say Miami really isn't your cup of tea. Let's say you wanted to go out to Paris. 
for the Olympics. And you also want to bring your two little pups. Well, you don't have a ton of options because most carriers have a weight limit, except for Delta. So you try to book tickets from Boston over to Paris round trip. Well, that would cost about $1,500. If instead though, you took your Capital One points, transferred to Virgin Red, you can make that exact same booking for 60,000 points and pay less than $65 in taxes and fees. Folks, this is the exact example that I'm actually doing when we go out to Paris. We're gonna go fly into Paris and we're gonna fly home from Rome back into Boston. This ticket is a little over $1,500 per person, but because I'm able to use points and miles, I'm paying less than $65. And as you can see, it's not always gonna be in business class. This is an incredible value for booking economy class tickets as well. Example number three. And of course, to get the maximum value out of your points and miles, it's always gonna pay off if you're able to redeem for international business class flights. Let's say you wanted to get out to Singapore. You could pay cash flying on Singapore Airlines from JFK all the way out there, a little over $3,000 a person. Instead though, you can take points from Capital One, transfer them to Air Canada, and use Air Canada miles to book for a Singapore Airlines flight that would come in at 87,500 miles in less than 100 Canadian dollars. So as you can see, folks, there's a wide gamut of how you can extract value from that signup bonus. Whether you want to fly domestic first class, international economy, or international business class, you have the gamut, but the thing that you shouldn't do is take those points and redeem it for cash back because that's going to get you less than $400. And if you're curious as to how I find my award availability, I use this app called Seats.Arrow. You can go on the desktop or you can get the mobile. It's 100% free to use, but you can only search for three months of award flight availability. If you want to get the pro version, which lets you search for 12 months out, you will have to pay for that. Personally, I think it's worth it, but by no means do you need it. And if you are interested in getting it though, I do have a referral link down below. Feel free to check it out. The next benefit this card offers is a $300 travel credit every single year that you can use to book travel, be it hotel or airfare or whatever travel you wanna book through the Capital One travel portal. The one caveat I'm gonna call out here is there have been a lot of reports online that the travel portals are actually elevated. Meaning if you just went to search for a particular flight or a hotel, it actually might be cheaper to go direct versus the Capital One travel portal. Personally, I could probably agree with that. I think generally most travel portals through whether it be Capital One or Chase or Amex can be a little bit juiced. However, the good news is based on what I've saw online on Reddit and as well as what I'm reading from Capital One themselves, they have a price match guarantee. And so if whatever you're looking to book, be it a hotel or a flight is more expensive than what you can see outside of the travel portal, they've got a price match guarantee that allows you to call them up and get price matched to that lower offer so you can still take advantage of this $300 travel credit. The card also comes with a $100 anniversary credit every single year that comes in the form of 10,000 miles. The nice thing about this is that it doesn't expire, so you don't have to use it every year. You could just stack it year on year on year, and this has been on the card since year one. Whereas the $300 travel credit, you do have to use every year or it will expire. The card also offers a $100 credit to global entry, which includes TSA PreCheck. As someone who travels, TSA PreCheck is a godsend. Keep your belt, keep your shoes, keep your laptops in the bag, and you just zip on through. In addition, having global entry, you come back into the US like that. So if you're coming in through busy ports, through New York, through LA, through San Francisco, you don't have to wait in that immigration line, you just zip on through. And personally, I've timed it from when I get off the plane at Boston Logan to when I'm collecting bags. It's literally nonstop walking when you have global entry. Pro tip here, if you do go ahead and elect for global entry, do your interview on arrival because right now these interview times are really, really far out. As a card that competes in that premium travel category, this card gives you automatic access to airport lounges. These are locations in the airport which you can go kick back, have some food, have a drink, and just generally relax before your flight instead of going and having to cram to the gate. And what I really like about the Venture X is that you have three broad category of lounges to choose from. The first is Priority Pass, which probably has the largest global footprint. Next, you also have access to Plaza Premium Lounges. In the third category of lounges are Capital One's own lounges. So right now they have three lounges open around the country. In Denver, 
in Dallas, as well as in Washington DC, Dulles. Now, personally, I haven't been able to make my way into one of these particular lounges because I sit in Boston and don't really fly through those airports, but what I'm seeing online is these lounges are phenomenal. And by way of having the card, you'll also get Hertz President Circle status, which is the highest tier status for Hertz rental car. I personally have had President Circle for a couple years now, and it's really amazing when you rent a car from an airport. You show up, you go to the Hertz area, and they've got these cars lined up for people who have President Circle, and you can just pick any car from that lineup, and it could very well, and most of the time, it's an upgrade from what you've booked. And in that similar vein, this card also comes with auto rental insurance. If you pay for your phone bill using this credit card, you also have cell phone insurance that covers up to an $800 claim with a $50 deductible, and you can make up to two claims within a 12-month period. And the last benefit I wanna highlight for the Venture X is the fact that you can add free authorized users. To put that in perspective, this card is in the premium travel category. It competes with the Chase Sapphire Reserve as well as the American Express Platinum. With the Chase Sapphire Reserve, you'll have to shell out $75 for each authorized user. For the American Express Platinum, you will have to shell out a whopping $195. Whereas for the Venture X, it's free. And what's amazing is the authorized users also get the same lounge benefit. So the authorized users, the free one, gets priority pass. And what's also amazing about the priority pass coming from the Venture X is there's no limit on the number of guests. Now, the lounge can still limit the number of guests, but the priority pass doesn't. Whereas for the Sapphire Reserve, two guests. For the American Express Platinum, two guests. The Venture X, unlimited. So now let's think about this. You've got a Venture X, you add an authorized user. The authorized user gets priority pass. They can bring in theoretically unlimited number of guests and your priority pass can bring in theoretically unlimited number of guests. That's insane for a card coming in at the price it comes in at, and we'll talk about in the next section. But before we get there, let's wrap up and give the final verdict and rating for this card. So taking everything into account, the transfer partners, the incredible benefits, the authorized users, the unlimited priority pass guests, I would say this card is almost a near perfect five out of five, but I will have to give it a ding. And the slight ding is for that $300 travel credit, being that it takes a little bit of work. And a little bit of work is you have to make sure that you're getting the lowest price. And if you're not, you have to go and call and get a price match guarantee. Now, is that annoying? Yes. However, do I think it's worth it to go through that length for this particular card? I really think so. But overall though, I'm gonna give it a zonk of 0.25 points. So this comes in at 4.75 out of five JFTs. Now on to the annual fee. For the annual fee though, we're gonna bring in some guest contestants because you really need perspective to understand it. So right now, the Capital One Venture X comes in at $395. It's two other competitors in this space, the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the American Express Platinum come in at $550 and $695 respectively. And so you're probably thinking, oh, okay, so it's cheaper than the other two, but it's still $395. Yes, but however, keep in mind, this card comes with the $300 travel credit and the $100 anniversary credit. Effectively, each year, you'll get $400 worth of credits. So if we go ahead and do some math, 395 minus 400, folks, $5 back in your card for a premium travel card that competes with a Sapphire Reserve and a Platinum. And guess what? The Sapphire Reserve, even once you take out the credits, it'll cost you 250. The American Express Platinum, when you take out the useful credits, you will pay one to $200. The Venture X will put $5 back into your pocket. And just really appreciate that for a second because it's not a no annual fee cashback card with no transfer partners. It's a card that offers transfer partners a 2X catch all. So for that, the annual fee, it's not a five out of five. This is a scale breaking at least six out of five JFTs. Now the final verdict. If we total up all of the JFTs, this card comes in at a whopping 17.75 out of 20 JFTs. So what's my recommendation? The net of it is you needed this card yesterday. This card most definitely is still the reigning champ as the number one credit card of 2024. This card as a 2X catch-all, very easy to use. This card has all the transfer partners we know and love. And this card will put $5 back into your pocket. However, I do know there's gonna be one objection and that's gonna be that the $300 travel credit that you have to use through the Capital One Travel Portal is a pain to use. To that I say, yes, I agree. It is kind of a pain to use. It's kind of a pain to log onto your computer to find a travel booking, to then have to go find another travel booking to make sure it's the cheapest. And if it's not, you have to do a price match guarantee call. However, folks, there is no such thing as a free lunch in this world. 
If you want anything of outsized value, you have to put in the work. When I got my first 1 million points, it was literally getting in my car, buying gift cards, driving to a Walmart, buying a money order, and depositing in the bank, and rinse and repeat. It literally involved me going around the greater Boston area. It was not a sit back, flip a switch, here's a million points. And so to that I say, if you want anything, you're gonna have to put in the work. And if you don't wanna put in the work, then this isn't the card for you. But for the vast majority of you out there, if you wanna get paid $5 for one of the best, and let me, let me say that, for the best premium travel card of 2024, the Capital One VentureX is your friend. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, I can drop for you my affiliate referral link in the description box below. And if you wanna see what these points and miles can get you in the form of a business class flight, you can feel free to check out this review video. I'll leave in the link up here as well. Any comments, questions, drop it down below and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.